Today we have a very special guest from Mexico. His name is Manuel Cervantes Cespedes, graduated as an architect by the Anahuac University in Mexico and also a member of the Mexican Art Creator National Anthem. In 2004, he founded Manuel Cervantes e-Studio. He has been working with different authorities and private clients in Mexico, United States and also Europe. Manuel Cervantes has also been honored with the national and international awards, including Louis Barragan Lifetime Achievement from Mexico's College of Architects, the Architectural League of New York 2015 Emerging Voices, the Architectural Review Emerging Architecture Award 2014, and he also won the first prize in architectural design category at the 19 Pan American Biennial of Architectural Quito back 2014, and also several civil medals in Mexico's National Architectural Biennial. Without further ado, let's invite our special guest, Manuel Cervantes from Mexico, up to the stage. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming on a Saturday morning. Uh, thank you for the invitation. I'm very excited to be here in Kuala Lumpur, a city that I found quite uh, similar to Mexico City. Uh, so I, I, I'm very excited to, to meet this new culture and, and this friendly community. I think that to understand the work of our office, I need to explain Mexico. I don't know if everyone is familiar with Mexico, but we are here, North America, but we seems to be like the connection between South and North America. And, and that put us for the last decades in, in, a, in a very difficult position. 500 years ago, when the Spanish came to America, they discovered this magnificent culture. This is an image of Teotihuacan next to Mexico City. And understanding that Later, we became a colonial city. This is downtown Mexico City. Uh, we, we develop this uh, society and community that it's the combination of two different cultures. Later, we became this modern city. This is a picture of the 40s uh, when Mario Pani uh, uh, Le Corbusian Mexican disciple uh, was doing this kind of uh, modern projects. And now we are this massive uh, organism. This is a, a picture of a regular for, uh, informal development on the outskirts of the city. And this is a regular picture of our city. We have also these beautiful landscapes on different places. We are a beautiful country with uh, almost uh, five different ecosystems. Last year, we were trying to develop this Norman Foster Airport for the city. Now it's canceled. And this is another reality, again, of, of our city. So this is a, a very, very short uh, understanding in, in this few pictures of how Mexico culture is very, very different and we have huge contrast. And I think that the same happens here. And, and with this, this uh, Heraclio uh, understanding, this is a simple understanding of his Considencia Positorum, it is the innate and the inherent desire of man that forces him to try to conceive the opposites as complementary aspects and try to approach the mystery of ultimate reality. So for me, this is very important because to be a Mexican and to work with the opposites, it creates a complementary discipline in our office. So we don't try to avoid any kind of project, we try to work with all kind of projects. It doesn't matter if we got good, bad, or, or, or middle budgets. It's about doing architecture. And understanding our city, understanding our culture, I think that I can explain uh, our work because um, a few years back, Juhani Palasma was doing an essay about our work 
and he was describing our practice as the result of all the heritage that we have, all this cultural background, all this uh, architectural heritage. And I think that it's very important to understand that our practice is a result of all of that. We are not inventing anything, we are doing something that is part of a bigger thing. So I will present uh, concepts, uh, elements and, 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 and ideas that we use to design. I will not show projects per se, but I will show pictures of different stages of, of our projects in order again to understand the ideas that we try to achieve. The most important one for me is the human and the site experience. I don't, I don't design at the office and I don't, I don't want anyone at the office to design objects, images, or, or intellectual uh, understanding of things. I prefer to design things for humans and, and for the experience of humans. So uh, I think that we are people, we are humans in a context. And, and how that context relate to us and how we start working with that context or that landscape is, is that we create an atmosphere and we create an at, a space. This is a very simple sketch that represents what I uh, understand about our work. I think that we are a, a, a thin cortex between the above and the underground. Uh, the context on, on, on the sky and the context on the underground. Our country specifically got a, a very, very difficult soil, sometimes a very, very difficult weather, and those conditions are very important for us when we design something. And at the end of the day, this small or thin cortex is where, where history or, or stories happen for our clients. So, with this idea of, of a human in a, in, a, in a space, I will talk a, a, again about uh, relevant ideas or concepts that, that we try to always understand. And the first one is the persistence. Since we are a, a, an old culture with a lot of heritage, I think that the respect of that is very important when we work. So this is a very small example of a project in downtown Mexico. This is downtown Mexico. This is the, the main Zócalo or plaza in the city, one of the biggest ones in, in the world, the biggest one in America. And this is, like I was telling you before, the, the contrast and, and the, the different layers of pre-colonial, colonial, modern, and contemporary buildings that work together in the same ecosystem. So in the case of this building, that it, it, it's a 200 years old building, devastated by time, devastated by wrong ideas of, of how to, to, to redesign or to rebuild things. We understand simple things like the persistence of all the structures, or the persistence of simple things like light. So we decide to keep it very, very low profile, very simple and very subtle, just as the exercise of ourselves in, in, a, in a bigger scale of time. This is, a, 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 again, a, a simple representation of, a, of, a, of an exercise that we do a lot at the office but that exemplifies how we work and how we like to work with the persistence of things. Then, in the city, uh, we try to be very pragmatic. When we work with uh, private or public clients, it's important to understand different elements like economy, like budgets, like uh, political parties, communities, societies, and stuff. So we try to work for all of those elements. And to be pragmatic has been very, very simple. 10 years ago, we started designing uh, TODs, uh, 
uh, transit-oriented development, sorry. Uh, these, these places that for decades uh, were very, 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 very abandoned or, or in pretty bad shape, we have 49 hubs in, in the subway station system at the city. And the thing with the city is that we have a 9 million uh, population city. But on the surrounding area of the city, we have another 11 million people. So it's difficult to understand because we are a 24, uh, 23 million people city, but uh, politically or legally we are not. So we have this uh, daily exodus of people traveling, commuting, and, and, and transporting uh, to the city and to the outside of the city. And that, that's a very, very difficult uh, uh, or a very complex urban thing. So with these projects, what we are trying to bring is services and affordable housing to these uh, places that are public and, and sometimes unused spaces to uh, avoid uh, unnecessary commuting times and, and to bring people back to the city. Because as we know, uh, all over the world people are uh, migrating from, from, from the rural areas to the cities, but they are not getting into the cities. They are getting into the surrounding areas of the city. And, and probably the most uh, dramatic or stressful uh, thing in, in a, on a daily basis life is, is the time that we spend commuting. In Mexico City, the average of, a, of a commuting time for a person is like two hours in the morning and then two hours uh, in the night. So we are spending probably half of our time by commuting. So as a, as a society, that's a very, very difficult thing to, 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 to resolve. But we're trying, again, like to bring people back to the cities in these places that are affordable. So this is, this is the, the idea of a, of a transit-oriented development, how you can bike or walk or use the public transportation and, and spread yourself in a 15 minutes commute. And, and by doing that and having everything on that 15 minutes range, you can have a, very, uh, a better quality of life. This is a traditional uh, picture on, a, on one of these places that we call Paraderos. Uh, and, and we have been trying again to understand the reality of our community. We're not trying to change completely or to bring another uh, foreign concept to these, to these areas. We are just trying to understand uh, our culture, our community, and obviously our budgets. This is another common picture in Mexico where we uh, use the public uh, streets or places sometimes to create these beautiful markets that sometimes are only on on, on, a, on one or two days, but sometimes these places are all the time uh, not invading, but using these, these, uh, these streets. So, again, understanding our reality, our society, and, uh, and our way of, of doing things, we have been doing this, this project with the same philosophy. This is, for an example, a section of a 500,000 square meters building. It's per, very pragmatic, very simple. Just repeat several times and create different spaces to commute or to, to have services. And the construction is also very simple. And the system will be at the end, the atmosphere of the, of the space. So for us, how we design for building things is very important. We try not to design things just for presentations or ideas, but to get real results. This is one of the biggest uh, subway hubs in the world after the places like Shibuya Station in, in Tokyo. So you can see that when we 
work with this kind of projects. We try to use local uh, labor, local uh, materials. We try to, to be very, very pragmatic again. And then when we have in the city other opportunities, we also try to relate ourselves to climate. This is a, a San Luis Potosí, a city uh, in, in, in north of Mexico. It's a desert city and it's a building that talks about that region, the materiality of, of the place. This is an ongoing project but for me, it's very important to show pictures of our uh, uh, construction sites because in, at the office, this, this stage is very, very inspirational. We get a lot of ideas and inspirations from, from our, our, our work on site. Another example in Mexico City of an ongoing project, again, very pragmatic, very simple, but in a way, uh, a good expression of our, of our culture. Now, I'm going to change radically the idea. We talked about uh, the city, the persistence, the pragmatism, and now I'm going to talk about the landscape that, for me, if it's very important. If you Google uh, landscape, you will get this. This is like the first uh, trans. Uh, uh, definition of landscape. And the character of a landscape helps define the self-image of the people who inhabit it and a sense of place that differentiates one region from other regions. So in this very simple uh, definition, we have very, very strong words for us at the office. Region and people. And since I was telling you that Mexico is a, a very big country with very, very different climates and very different situations, every region is different. So we try to work to understanding that and to achieve a, a, a nice relationship with all these different contexts and regions. So it doesn't matter if we work at the mountains in Mexico or in a beautiful lake near to Munich, the idea of this uh, Heidegger's cabin that always relate us to the, to the, to the primitive principles of, of, of the mountains, of, of, the, of the outside of the cities, it's also very important for us at the office because most of our projects in this kind of landscapes are intended to be places for people that want to avoid for the weekends or, or a certain time of, of time, the cities. And understanding uh, these projects that are related to landscape, there are other like sub uh, interests. Uh, topography and landscape, again, and how we sometimes start a project by just working with the landscape and the topography. Um, I think that sometimes just working with the, the context, the topography, you can do the, the, the most powerful uh, architectural statements. Uh, sometimes I, I, I try to think that by only understanding topography, you can achieve a lot more than designing buildings. So in these projects that I will pass, I, I, I just try to, to express this this idea, you know, how we integrate projects into, into the topography, how we uh, relate ourselves to, to, to the mountain or to the beach, and, and how we try, uh, like in this case, to disappear sometimes, you know, to be subtle, to be very, very simple in a way. Again, we can see some of our intentions on, on the pragmatism and by the use of say, some materials. Another example of a small cabin, a wood cabin, and you can see with these mock-ups how we work with simple structures, but with the idea that the structure will be the whole thing, 
how relate again with with this idea of, of, of the cabin in the woods. Another example of an equestrian project in a place called Puebla, two hours from the city. Yesterday, I, I think that we saw a lot of horses. I will be <laughs> fast with this. Uh, but well, how we try to integrate our projects into the landscape, again, it's, it's a very, very important thing. And how we relate spaces to the context, to, to the tangible or intangible elements of life, you know, like, like wind, breeze, light. And other structures that are related to the tectonic or the pragmatism idea of architecture. And this is an example of a hotel that we are doing near to Munich that talks about another kind of landscape, the landscape of the, the rural or the urban uh, context, and, and how, in this case, we try to integrate the project into other buildings and into other uh, existing elements. So, materiality and constructiveness, like, I was telling you about, for us, materiality relate, relate people to a region, to a site. And, and in my understanding, if you're visiting a place, you need to be part of that place. I hate when you travel to another city or another uh, region and, and, and you, you look at the same thing that you're looking all over the world, this generic idea of architecture. So we try to create things that are really related to, to the site, to the materiality of the site, in order to get a real experience when, when you travel or when you skip the city. So again, these are projects that we have been looking at, but with pictures that give us this idea. The idea of constructiveness, like I was telling you earlier, for us, it's very important how we build things uh, in order to get into the right budget, to get into the uh, good quality of things, understanding our capacities, understanding our, our culture. So these projects are sometimes only the result of a, of a simple structure, of a, the combination of a simple palette of materialities. And obviously, the atmosphere is uh, the final result of all of this. And these are pictures of all of these projects that shows the final result or the atmosphere that we imagine when we design all of these ideas and all of these processes and all of these things that we debate at the office when, when we start a, a project design. More horses, sorry. But well, um, so this is the hotel that we're designing right now next to Munich in a beautiful mountain scenery. The idea of the intimacy by the process of discovery, uh, it's a, a definition uh, or an idea or an interpretation of what Barragan was doing uh, a, f a few decades ago in Mexico. And it's obviously not uh, a Barragan's idea. It's the result of a lot of heritage or understanding of other cultures that he was doing. And for us at the office, is, this is very important because it's the way that we try to design spaces. Uh, and we can see this all over the world in, in any kind of, of culture. Uh, this is La Lambra in Spain, the, the, the Arab world buried in, in, in one single space. And when I say the, the process of discovery is how this, this architecture understand uh, how we explore a city or how we explore a building or how we explore a house. 
And, and again, it's not about objects, it's not about images, it's about the experience, the human experience of how we live in, in, in spaces or how we live in cities. So these are examples of, of the understanding of different elements like gardens or patios in history. And in Barragan's work, this is his house in Mexico. And again, the idea of a, of a garden or patio. And understanding that and using this concept is that we have been doing several houses in the city. Mexico City, maybe like Kuala Lumpur is a, a very sometimes frenetic city. And, and I think that a house needs to be the contrary of that. The house needs to be the escape of, of the daily routine and the chaos of a city. Uh, it doesn't matter if that is a good or a bad chaos, but it's that. And, and in order to get the privacy of, of a family world or a, a personal world, is that we try to bring all these concepts. And, and this is the first example of a house that create a different worlds with these patios and these gardens. Also talking about the materiality and, and, and the, the elements that I think that relate us to our culture. This is also a, an ongoing project. But again, creating personal worlds, creating interior spaces based on, on, on this simple and ancient idea. Another example of, of a house at the same city that works with the same concepts, with again simple concepts of, of how we relate to beautiful landscapes in the middle of the city, uh, with materials and, and, and with elements that relate to us to our culture or to our city. Another example at the same city of a house that tries to relate with the materiality of Mexico City and that tries to create this. You know, for me, this is a, a beautiful picture of, of, of what is our final goal, our main purpose when we design. Sometimes it's difficult to get pictures of people inside houses for obvious reasons, but uh, this, this is our main goal. So in a way, I think that with these pictures, I can express or I can represent what is Mexico and the materiality of our culture. And with the same concept, but in another location, León, Guanajuato, two and a half or three hours from, from the city, uh, with the same concept, uh, this is a, an office space for a vegetable company, a hydroponic vegetable company, and with the elements again of patio, light, water, and simple things that give us the opportunity to avoid the stress, to avoid the daily basis routine, is that we try to bring uh, all of those elements into into architecture. And with this, I will finish my presentation. And this is probably the, the, the last but the most important inspiration for us. And, and I will talk about people and region. For the last decades in Mexico, and I think that it's happening all over the world, uh, we have this concept of a family. Uh, this, is, this is almost like a joke, these, these pictures of, of the post-war uh, North American moments where, where governments and, and, and people decide that a family was this perfect heterosexual couple uh, looking at the most beautiful and Pinterest uh, house. And obviously that's, that's not, uh, it wasn't true back then and it's not true uh, today. In the case of Mexico, like I was telling you at the beginning, we are in a, in a very, very difficult location because we are between South America and North America and we have this huge exodus of people trying to get into the United States crossing Mexico. But we, are, we have also this 
Mexican migration to the United States of uh, one million people annually. And because of this uh, very complex uh, migration effect, uh, the idea of a family is totally different from this one. You know? The reality of our families by this terrible and sad effect that is the Mexican migration to the United, the United States is that we have families of single mothers, single grandmothers, grandparents with grandchildren, in-laws with grandparents, and, and, and now we have like this huge variety of different families living in spaces, and we still design and think that we need to achieve this beautiful house for them. It doesn't matter if you are on the desert, at the beach, at the mountain, it's only about a dream. So with these projects that I will show, we're not trying to solve the housing problem. This is very important for me to, to say. This is just an exercise from our office to get some clients the opportunity to have a, a, a real uh, process, or architectural process with an architect architectural office in a specific site. We are trying to explain us and to explain authorities that by doing this, we are doing houses for real families in real specific places. And again, I don't think that we are or that we can resolve the huge housing problem in our country by doing this, but it's an exercise that it's very helped helpful for us and obviously for these families, but I think that it's also a very helpful for authorities to understand that we can't design anymore in a generic or a standardized way. We need to focus ourselves in the different climates and in the different families that we are working for because, like I was telling you, we are not this heterosexual family with kids. We are a multicultural uh, and diverse community and society, and we need to design for, for that, for, for the real purposes of, of, of families, couples, singles, or any situation that, that we have. And understanding people, families, uh, we also try to understand region. And these are images of different uh, vernacular projects in Mexico that give us the understanding. This is also not Mexico, this is uh, Peru, and Lima, and Machu Picchu. But understanding materiality and, and, and vernacular processes that I think that are very, very important to understand because our, I mean, today we are very uh, concerned or very, very uh, absorbed of, of, of the element, constructional elements that we have on hand and we are forgetting tradition and vernacular. So I, I will present uh, four different small projects with totally different context and climate, but with the same idea of a pragmatic, uh, very economic and simple way of resolving the, the houses. This first one, uh, it's a 47 square meters house for a family with two, two kids in the mountain next to the city in Mexico City. Um, and you can see the, the simple idea of how to avoid uh, concrete, how to avoid uh, construction processes that we don't need. And sometimes authorities put us on the agenda. And Understanding other things, understanding climate, understanding cultural behaviors, how a family wants to have a porch or, or a, a gathering place, but with separate rooms because they have kids. So it's an exercise as the same that we do with, with our rich clients. It's the, the, the same time that we spend with them, the same ideas that we put on, on, on the projects. But on a smaller space, it, it's just that. We need to achieve a smaller space and a, and a 
smaller budget, but the exercise is the same and how we work with the people and how we work with materials and how we work with the site is the same thing. So this is uh, the result of this small and beautiful house. This is a family. And I think that you can see the resemblance and, and the same concepts that we have been looking at the, the rich houses or the big buildings. This is a house for a single mother with three children that doesn't live there in Oaxaca, San Mateo del Mar, next to the beach, in a beautiful place. Uh, but she wants to have the room for their children to come uh, on, on holidays or, or other times. So it's a, a, a very open space for she to work, to cook, to, 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 to hang out, and, and on the back, the rooms, small rooms, because the kids were not always there. Obviously, we're using different echo techniques that I don't need to explain, because these are very, very simple. Uh, but depending on the weather, again, this is San Mateo del Mar, this is a tropical area, uh, a lot of hurricanes in September, October. That's why it's a little bit elevated. And how we use, again, the echo simple techniques, a beautiful context, a personal garden, and materials that relate us again to the culture of Oaxaca, that relate us to the beach. Another example uh, in the desert, this is on, on the north part of Mexico, uh, a very, very different climate, uh, different eco techniques, but again with the simple and same principles uh, that we use on, on every project. And this is the last one in, in Chiapas, Palenque, uh, another tropical uh, region with the use of vernacular materials and eco techniques and, and the understanding of a community that has this kind of, of, of quality and, and this kind of behavior. As you can see in these pictures, we are not trying to bring any new concept or city concept to these communities. We are just trying to, to make better places for them. Thank you very much.